you, friends. Mono ducks here. I had a viewer question about the difference between frequency modulation and pulse width modulation. And I thought I'd just take a look at that real quick and share some some thoughts on the differences and possible uses of that. Today I'm using a, a new app I just discovered, the AU Scope X, um, which I'm loving. It's um, if you've ever priced oscilloscopes before, you're looking at three hundred dollars or so for a decent one. And this app is like five bucks. This is not a sponsored video, but I just really love it. It's been helping me visualize some stuff, and it's pretty great. So we're going to use that today uh, to take a look at the differences between FM and PWM, frequency modulation, and pulse width modulation. So I thought maybe I'd start with uh, frequency modulation first. Um, the, the easiest way to understand uh, if you look at the word frequency, we're talking about the number of times that something happens. So right now I'm playing, let me just open this up and turn off my modulators. Right now I'm playing a saw wave. And if you look at the scope, you can see kind of two instances of that on the screen. And if I jump up an octave, you see four, and if I go up another octave, you see eight. So it's it's showing up on the screen more frequently, depending on uh, where I am in, in terms of pitch. So you can say, you can say that you have a higher frequency uh, at higher octaves. So frequency modulation, if you start with that understanding, is changing uh, the essentially the pitch. We experience it as pitch. But it's changing the frequency uh, within a given uh, within a given stretch. And I don't know the technical words for this, but if we're saying the the frequency of of a note or the frequency of a wave within a given time period, um, that's what we're talking about with frequency modulation. So uh, your really common uses for that are simple things that you can hear, like uh, vibrato. So let's let's take for example, I'm using oscillator three for a saw wave right now, um, and what I'll do, I have a LFO over here that's a, a triangle waveform. So I'm going to send that in uh, to the frequency modulation control, and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm just going to take this triangle wave LFO. I'm going to run it into frequency FM control on oscillator number three. Right now, nothing's happening, but I'm going to turn it all the way up. So if you think about the wave, and I'll just, let's just take a look at a triangle wave. That's how we were modulating that. So this is what I, oops, uh, let's turn that down. So a triangle wave, if you think about the shape of that, it's almost as if you were turning a knob up and down and up and down. And that's the way I think of the modulations. So if I did it slowly, I'm going to patch that back in. FM control my LFO and I'm not going to do it slowly, I'm going to do it to a lesser extent so it's almost as if you're taking that slider and moving up and down like a triangle so if I increase the voltage it's going to have a deeper effect Uh, 
Um, and if I do more uh, a higher frequency LFO, it's going to do it more often, just like we talked about the space uh, decreasing at higher frequencies. On the 2600, you can run your LFO at a speed that uh, gets pretty close to audio range. So you can get a very different sound from that. If I were to use a triangle, uh, excuse me, a, a square wave instead, we would get, uh, thinking again about the shape of waves and, and using waves to turn knobs for you, a square wave, and let's just look at one actually, or a pulse wave more properly, and turn our modulation down. So it's got kind of a section where it's on, and a section where it's really low, so it's almost like an on-off switch, it's either all there or it's all not. So if I use the, the square wave, to modulate that. Got my LFO square wave. To modulate pitch, you're going to have uh, two pitches that come out of that. I turn my frequency up. And if I turn the, the depth of the modulation up, those two pitches are going to be further apart. So that's a really common use for uh, frequency modulation is just to, to modulate the pitch that you're hearing. Another really common use for frequency modulation is to modulate frequency with an envelope. And this is used to create drum sounds. So if, for example, I take, uh, I'm going to use a different kind of wave. Let's use a square wave from VCO number two. So right now with no modulation, that's the sound that I have. Now if I use an ADSR, for example, to modulate the pitch or the frequency, I can get a, a very different <clears throat> sound out of it um, by making things happen very quickly. So I can change the frequency very quickly and it gives you a kind of attack. So what I'm going to patch up here is going to use the ADSR both for uh, amplitude and also for uh, frequency modulation and we're going to use a really short time factor. Um, so let's get that plugged in. Actually, I don't even need to do that. So let's get that set up. I'm going to switch from my AR uh, in the mix to my ADSR. And now this is what controls uh, my amplitude. And I've set it to a really short, really short attack. And let's take some of this reverb out of here. So listening to the amp amplitude, we can make things happen. really quickly with the amplitude. And then what I'm going to do is take that same uh, envelope signal and I'm going to run it into uh, FM control. Uh, we're listening to VCO number two, so I'm going to run it into FM control on VCO number two. Some of these cables down. Now I haven't engaged it yet, but I'm going to pick a low note on the keyboard. So the more the more of that we have, the more we get into this like laser stab sound. And I'm going to take the the uh, frequency of that oscillator right down. And then we're going to mess with this. And I'm going to go down on my keyboard and give it a lower velocity.
if I make that a little bit longer, we can hear some more pitch in there. So that's kind of another another use for pitch envelopes or for frequency modulation with an envelope. You can use that to get drum sounds um, or any other kind of percussion uh, if you're using a quick envelope. Finally, if we're talking about frequency modulation, let me get these guys tuned up again. And I'm going to switch this back to a longer envelope. So another thing we can do is your classic FM synthesis. So the I would the way I kind of think about the difference between modulation and synthesis is that we're using modulation to to change uh, the effect of a current sound, but if we're switching to um, to FM synthesis, we're actually creating new sounds with that. So what I'm going to do is just super simple. It's it's not like a DX7 or anything like that. Uh, but I'm just going to take two sine waves. And I'm going to take the output of oscillator 2. Run a sine wave in here. Classic sine wave. And then what I'm going to do with uh, oscillator number three is use this sine wave uh, to do frequency modulation on oscillator number two. Now one of the differences here is that a lot of the, the modulations that we've done so far have not been in the audio range. So we, we haven't been listening to um, a modulator running fast enough to make its own tone. Uh, but in this case, I'm actually going to use the uh, audio rate output. I'm not going to switch this into low low frequency mode. So I'm going to use uh, audio rate output running directly into this oscillator. We'll see how they interact. So right now you've got one uh, sine wave, and now I'm going to increase the voltage coming from this sine wave. So now we've got all that uh, voltage running in there. Let's pick a higher pitch. And to, to get the, the sort of FM sounds that you would expect to hear, we're going to mess with the, the oscillator frequency. I'm going to go back to my ADSR. envelope So depending on the interaction of these two, you can get quite interesting effects. So now I'm bringing in the audio of this. But if I take it out completely, we've just got its effect on VCO2. some CV control into the filter as well and increase my resonance. Let's see what happens.
Kind of cool. So you can use uh, frequency modulation uh, in audio rates to, to create FM synthesis. And below audio rates to create just modulation on whatever your whatever your source is. Pretty cool. So if we now talk about pulse width and pulse width modulation, pulse width applies specifically to the pulse wave. So you can't can't really do at least on most synths you can't really do pulse width modulation on anything but a pulse wave. And what we're doing with pulse width modulation is uh, changing the the width of the wave. So uh, let's take a look at a pulse wave. So that's already in there by default. Um, and let's go back to a longer longer envelope. Let's zoom out a little. So if I if I play a low a low pitch on the keyboard, you get a good look at the the width of that pulse. And when it is at what we call a 50% pulse width, that's when you have your classic square wave. These have peaks and troughs, but essentially you've got a square wave. And if you change the pulse width. get vastly different uh, tones out of that one wave. So this uh, pulse width modulation is a, is a really common way of taking one oscillator and making it sound like more oscillators. So you'll find a lot of uh, one oscillator synths that have pulse width modulation built in, and it's a great way to get a fatter sound. So if I just play... just the wave by itself, it doesn't sound like too much um, you could hear the changes when I was uh, throwing the, the dial, but of course you don't want to sit there and do that all the time. So I'm going to take an LFO. This is a triangle LFO. I'm going to run it into pulse width modulation. I'm going to turn that up. And we have an instantly fatter sound. Now, if you look at that on the scope, you can kind of see the pulse width moving back and forth. The reason why this makes it sound almost like you've got multiple oscillators is because when you have multiple oscillators running the same waveform, it can be pretty hard to get those at the exact same pitch. Um, and since they're not going to be at the same pitch, uh, most of the time they're going to have a tendency to beat back and forth and if you look at the the similarity on the scope it, it almost looks like you've got pulse width modulation just with two oscillators beating back and forth pretty similar That's like one of the most common uses for pulse width modulation. Another cool thing that you can do with it, though, um, just bear in mind that uh, pulse pulse waves are also used to trigger things. So pulses can be used to send essentially clock signals back and forth through your system, um, and you can apply pulse width modulation to that. So if you're using a square wave uh, to tell for example, our sequential controller, how fast to move, uh, we can modulate that and therefore modulate the speed that things are moving at. So let me take, um, we're going to listen to oscillator number three, but we're going to use oscillator number two as a controller for the sequencer up top. 
So I'm going to send out my pulse wave and I'm going to send it to a multiple because I also wanted to open up my gate. So firstly I'm going to take that up. Actually I'm going to send it a little bit later down the line. So I'm going to take that up and send it to my shift control of timing and in order for this not to be audio rate I need to switch to the low frequency mode. I'm going to take another cable. So again, I'm sending my pulse width into the multiple. I'm sending one, uh, one end of that to control my uh, sequential controller. I'm going to take another uh, output of that same square wave and use it to open my gates. And what you'll see is that if I change the frequency of the square wave, the gate opens more or less depending on the frequency. All right, so just to keep us from going absolutely insane while I uh, plug in the rest of this, just going to take out the gate control and now I'm going to take uh, just for an audio example we're going to listen to uh, oscillator number two which is going to be controlled by my sequencer whose timing is controlled by the square wave uh, so let's send that into keyboard CV so what I've got is a square wave or a pulse wave uh, telling my gate when to open telling my sequencer when to advance to the next stage and that sequencer's frequency is controlling the pitch of oscillator number three. So let's plug in this gate and see what we got. And if I change my oscillator frequency So that's what I get if I'm if I'm using it as a clock. Now if I change the pulse width, I'm going to get uh, a different amount of on time versus off time. So if you remember the square wave has got high and low sections. Think of high as on and low as off. So let's just play with that a little bit. So if I turn the pulse width down, I'm getting really low on time and high off time. Should get the opposite. So with a large uh, pulse width setting I get more on time, more of the wave above, uh, above zero. If I turn it down I get more of the wave below zero. Um, and what you can do if you're not really concerned about keeping your clock time perfect is you can modulate that. So once again, I'm going to take my LFO, taking a triangle wave, I'm going to send it into pulse width modulation. We're going to get our gate going. And I'm going to turn up the pulse width modulation. So now you've got a shift in how long the notes are held. And if I change my LFO speed, you'll get different patterns. So let's go nuts with that. Let's say I'm going to switch the, the oscillator that we're listening to over to oscillator number one uh, just because that one doesn't have pulse width modulation on it. So we're going to listen to that and we're going to switch how we're using everything. So I'm going to send voltage control to oscillator number one. 
Let's turn this back on. Got that to where you can hear it now. 50% pulse pulse width on that. I've still got my pulse width determining time and speed. But what I'm gonna do now, what I'm gonna do now is use oscillator number three as my LFO. So I'm gonna switch that into low frequency. I'm gonna take that pulse wave out of there. We're going to send it into pulse width modulation here. And let's see what we got with that. So I'm going to increase my frequency so we'll hear changes more often. change our pulse width on our modulator. So what happens if I take my LFO and modulate my, my other LFO? I have no idea what this is going to sound like. I just thought of it just now. Let's try it. So I've got an LFO is going to modulate the frequency and so I'm sending it into my keyboard control. I think that's going to work. And that's going to modulate... Actually, let's not do that. Let's modulate the pulse width on this. So we should have crazy timing now with that combination. There's a whole lot you can do with pulse width modulation just uh, besides just sounds. And I'm sure there's about a million applications for both frequency modulation and pulse width modulation that I just don't, don't even have time to talk about. Let's come back to a summary of the difference, and I'll leave you to kind of think think about what you could do with those differences in your music. Let's turn our modulations down. All right, so once again, we're just listening to oscillator number two. Which is a, oh, that's oscillator number two. And the audio rate. And let's open up our filter. So, once again, just to summarize frequency modulation is modulating the frequency of uh, the occurrences of a wave over a given period of time. So, Keyboard is your primary frequency modulator. And then you can also do it with LFOs and envelopes and various other ways. 
pulse width modulation is modulating the width of the pulse wave over time. Of course, both of these can be used as audio uh, tricks, or they can also be used as control frequencies, and you can control uh, waves with your square wave, with your pulse wave, and change the pulse width as you control things. Uh, you can control frequency with things besides oscillators. You can use LFOs, you can use uh, envelopes, you can do all kinds of things uh, to, to change the way that you're approaching frequency. Anyway, um, I hope this little bit of weekend nerdery was helpful. And um, as always, if you have questions, I'd love to hear them. If you have ideas, uh, please use the comments section to share them with the community. Um, I've been getting some great comments lately. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure that other uh, folks who are watching do as well. Um, if you don't have it yet, check out AU Scope X in the App Store. It's really, really freaking great, really useful. Um, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day and happy patching to you. Bye-bye.